Well, hello again. In this example, you will examine the assembly of a beam stiffness matrix. We will be looking at this two-member beam. We are given some basic properties here. Modulus of elasticity of 3500 KSI. Moment of inertia, 515 inches to the fourth, where member one has the properties of I and member two is twice that. The first thing we are going to need to do is label the degrees of freedom and I'm going to label the unrestrained degrees of freedom first, looking at the translational degree of freedom and the rotational degree of freedom. Then I will go to the restrained degrees of freedom here, three and four, five and six. We will need to recall that for a beam element, the stiffness matrix is labeled as such, where we would label these A, B, C, D, and if you pay attention to this matrix, you'll notice there are some repeating terms. There's a 12EI over L cubed term, there's a 6EI over L squared term, 4EI over L, and a 2EI over L. And then all other elements in that matrix just repeat those quantities, sometimes with opposite signs. And so for the beam stiffness matrix for member one, these would be the terms for those values. Please note the units on these. For translational degree of freedom, units are kips per inch. For rotational degree of freedom, it's kip inches per radian. And for the cross terms, that means the terms that cross between translational and rotational degrees of freedom has the strange set of units, kips per radian. We can then insert this into our stiffness matrix. Let's go ahead and label this according to the degrees of freedom that we know are associated with member number one. So that would be 3, 4, 1, 2. And let's look back at our original element just so that we can make sure we understand. These are my beginning degrees of freedom. These are my ending degree of freedom. Then for member 2, we'll consider that to be the origin there. And in a like fashion, we can compute for this member 2 the same quantities, just recognizing that they'll be using different values for the moments of inertia and then we can plug that in here. The degree of freedom labeling would be one, two, five, and six. So the last thing we need to do to generate the structure level stiffness matrix is to combine those two individual elements. Let me just go ahead and label these. Then I would like to show you how we get at least one of these terms. For instance, to get the term one, one, what we would do is we'd go to matrix number one and we would grab this term right here, the 1, 1 term. Then we would go to matrix number 2, grab the 1, 1 term, and we would add those. So the 7.2 and the 14.5 would then add together to get 21.7. And in a very similar fashion, you would go through each of these individual terms, say the 2, 4, you would scan through both of your element stiffness matrices, see if you have a 2, 4 term, there's a 2-4 term there, but this one does not have a 2-4 term, so that is why this value works out to be 25,035. Here is your structure level stiffness matrix. That concludes this example. As always, it is a beautiful day for studying structure.